praying and planning to conduct uh, teachings that will go back to the basics regarding our salvation. It's not to preach about salvation, but those things that has something to do with our salvation, like the doctrine of justification, sanctification, propitiation, imputation, adoption, predestination, election, sapatos nision, so whatever consummation that we may find. So we will try to restudy them and try to look at the uh, basics of the Bible because I found out as I look at it, we need to pray first before we study them. With salvation. Because I, as I study these things and look closely at uh, the things that are involved in our salvation, we know that salvation is easy. We know that salvation is purchased by the Lord for us. We know that salvation is a gift. We know that, and we know that even a child will be able to understand salvation because God made it so simple and made it available to all men because He's willing that not any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But then there is another side to it that even though it is simple, it must be preached and taught the right way. Because uh, if it will be presented in a complicated way, we might preach another gospel. And that kind of gospel will not save a person. Because there is only one gospel that can save a person, and that is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we are not careful, and sometimes because of our pride, we are trying to make salvation harder than how the Lord Jesus Christ presented it. And because of that, people are becoming confused and we know that God is not the author of confusion. If it will confuse, then it is not from the Lord. Salvation should give assurance. But if it will give confusion and that confusion will persist, we might have presented another gospel and not the gospel according to the word of God. So as we go through this, we are going to encounter several things that we need to really study and emphasize. Like for example, I do not know if you have heard about Lordship Salvation. Have you heard about Lordship Salvation? Hindi pa wala kayong idea. Okay, so this is something that uh, is being taught but we just do not know that it is Lordship Salvation. And sometimes I realize that I might be preaching that and not realizing that I may be preaching Lordship, Lordship Salvation. Have you heard about lifestyle evangelism? So there is such thing as a lifestyle evangelism wherein we believe that evangelism can be done by our lifestyle. And even using uh, verses like Matthew chapter 5 that we need to, to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works. And then by doing that, we say that people may be saved. And that is what you call lifestyle evangelism. So there are so many things that are going on that we may not know, but ignorance is never an excuse. So we have to understand them. We have to know them. We have to teach them because sometimes we may not realize that we are actually doing those things that are not biblical without knowing it. That is the uh, sad thing about it. And that is the, the very ele element of deception. Believing you are right when in reality you are wrong. Believing that what you're teaching is according to the Word of God, but in reality it is not according to God's Word. So we have to be careful, especially most of the battle, uh, battleground is in the area of salvation. Because if, if we are going to look at it, this is the very uh, place that the devil will confuse people because salvation is 
what really matters in the life of a person. If the devil can mess up salvation, then he can mess up so many people so that they will not understand the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why the devil is concentrating in, in making salvation uh, complicated so that people will come to a point in time that they, instead of, instead of having a peace of mind, they're going to have a, what you call confusion and doubt all of their lives without sometimes realizing that they are not really safe. So that is why it is very important that we go back to the basics so that we can uh, understand this and not go to the extreme and pronounce something that the Bible may not be teaching. Like for example, we say that uh, if, a person, if a person will not show any fruit of salvation, then that person is not safe. That may be true. And most probably it is true. But it is not always true. That is the thing that we need to understand. Because there are people who may be presented the right gospel. There are people who may have repented and believed the right gospel, but went to a place where there is no church that is teaching the right doctrine and stayed there for the rest of his life and not learn anything from the word of God that person may die without showing fruit of salvation but the mere fact that he believed in the right gospel he repented of his sins and believed on the right gospel will make him forgiven and will make him justified and will make him a child of God and then uh, I also notice that we also say this. All of these things are for study. I'm just trying to, to give uh, what I am looking at at this particular time that a safe person cannot backslide forever. So what do we really mean when we say that? I believe we have to qualify what that should mean because saying that a safe person if even if he backslid will always come back because if he will not come back therefore he was not really safe and there that may be true amen but th that may not be an absolute because what we need to do is to look at salvation and what salvation does in the life of a person. And then maybe look at several cases in the Word of God and what can we glean from it and then draw our conclusion from God's Word. Because a person can backslide to the point that God will have to take him home. And therefore, that person did not come back. So, how can we judge that person? of not coming back, but the mere fact that God took him because of his sin may actually prove that he was safe in the first place. Amen? You see what I'm saying? Because in Corinthians, we can see that many, uh, Paul says that some of you are sick and some are asleep. Meaning to say dead because they did things that are contemptible to the Lord's Supper. So we say these people did not have a chance to repent and go back to serving God in a right way, but God took them because of the sin that they have committed. And in the Bible, there is such a thing as sin unto death, which only a saved person can commit. So we need to say that person may die because of that sin and may not come back into this life um, no, may not come back while living into the fold of the Lord, but he was taken out because he committed such a sin. And the Lord must take him home because of that particular sin. So these are the things that we need to consider all along as we go through this, uh, what we call doctrine of salvation. So we need to be very, very clear 
about this so that we will not go to the extreme. Because there are extreme teachings that are going on right now and we need to understand which is which according to the word of God. Okay, justification. Justification is more than just pardon. Some Christians confuse or identify justi justification with pardon. Justification and pardon are not the same. Because pardon is you are, your sentence uh, was commuted if you have been sentenced or you have been forgiven because of good attitude, because of uh, uh, you are showing improvement and you were pardoned. Like we have what we call the presidential pardon. During the birthday of the president, he will pardon several uh, criminals from prison who showed exemplary attitude and character while they are in prison. But these pardoned people are still criminals. They were called ex-con or ex-convict. And that is pardon. But in justification, something different entirely happened in that when you are justified, it means that as if you did not commit any sin, no record. You're not an ex-convict. You have an immaculate record. If you will get anything from the NBI, you can get a clearance. You can get a police clearance. You can get all the clearances that you want if you are justified. So that is the difference between justification and pardon. But most of the time, Christians, they confuse these two. And they thought that we were merely pardoned. Yes, we were pardoned or forgiven by God, but more than that, we were justified. And this is what we're going to study today so that we will understand what justification means and it will aid us in understanding what salvation is actually is. Okay, law and justice demanded that penalty for every sin. That is the law and that is the justice of God. If we will look at the scale 18.20, we will see here what God said. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse number 20, God is very clear when he said that. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So if you sin, then there is a penalty for sin. You are going to pay for your sin. And I'm going to pay for my sin. And the soul said that the, uh, the, uh, the uh, God said, The soul that sinned shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So if you commit sin, then you're going to die. Romans uh, chapter 6, verse number 23. The first part is uh, very clear for the wages of sin is death so when you commit sin in the law the justice of god then you have to pay for it and the payment is what we call death but the mercy of god yearned to rescue us because god is merciful and god is love he does not want us to die in our sins the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish. It is not God's willingness. That's why here it is very, very clear that Calvinism is wrong. Because in Calvinism, God is willing that those whom he did not elect will perish. And only those whom he elected will not perish. So he's not willing that any, meaning to say not even one man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, again, that phrase destroys Calvinism. Why? Because if those that will not perish were elected, why is it that God is willing that they should repent if they were already elected? So whether they like it or not, they will repent because they were elected by God. So God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But in his justice, he must punish sin and even though he wanted to forgive, he must not condone sin and he must not compromise with 
sin. Look at Isaiah chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Isaiah 5, 22 and 23. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. So, which justify the wicked for reward. Of course, only people can do that, but God will not do that. He will never condone sin. And this is only happening in what we call human judgment, but not with God. Because with God, look at Exodus 23, verse number 7. Exodus 23, 7. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous lay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. So if you're wicked, you will be judged by God. Because God is just, and God is righteous. But on the other hand, God is love, and God is merciful. So he must condemn what is wrong. He cannot condone them. Look at Luke chapter 16, verse number 15. Luke 16, 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. These are the Pharisees. These Pharisees are trying to justify themselves before men by doing good works, by giving alms, by praying almost three hours every day by fasting and showing men that they are fasting but God said all of these things are abomination in the sight of God why? because God cannot justify that which is wrong there is no way that God is going to do that look at Romans chapter 2 verse number 13 for not the hearers of the law are just before God but the doers of the law shall be justified but the question is who can do the law? Nobody. And because nobody can do the law, of course, except the Lord Jesus Christ, therefore nobody can be justified before God. Because Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we have a very perplexing problem. There is a dilemma that only God can solve. I cannot solve this. You cannot solve it. Because no matter how we try, we are the guilty ones. And there is no way that we can justify ourselves. So this kind of problem can only be solved by God. And what was the solution? The Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, volunteered to be the man to live a perfect life therefore satisfying the demands of the law and being pronounced as righteous. And then his righteousness was imputed unto us. When you say imputed, given to our credit. We did not do it. We have nothing to do with it. He did it all, but he gave it freely to us. It was given to our account. Pastor, paano yun? Meron kang meron kang account sa bangko. Ang deposito mo, 100. Naging 1,100. Kasi may nagdeposito ng 1,000. Yun ang imputation. It was given to your credit without you doing anything about it. So when the Lord Jesus Christ satisfied the demand of the law, then He imputed to us that righteousness that He received by obeying the law. Romans 5.17 Look at what the Bible says. It was a gift given to us. Romans 5.17 For if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So in justification, we were given the gift of 
righteousness. We are sinners. We are not righteous. But we are pronounced righteous because the righteousness of Jesus was imputed unto us. Given to our credit. Not, not just imparted, but imputed. Hindi lang basta ibinigay. Kung hindi talagang isinuot sa atin. So when God the Father looked at us, we are as if we are the Lord Jesus Christ. When it comes to righteousness. Romans 3.22 Romans chapter 3 verse number 22 Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference. So that righteousness was actually the righteousness of God given to us because we believe and it doesn't matter who you are there is no difference. You may be the chiefest of sinners. It was given to you. You may have committed only one sin in your life. It was given to you. So our justification and righteousness is the same in the sight of God. There is no difference in the, our righteousness. And there is no difference whoever you are that will accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior. So what is this justification? Number one. Let us define justification. Justification is the judicial act of God whereby those who put faith in Christ are declared righteous in His eyes and free from guilt and punishment. Ulitin ko para mailagay doon. Justification is the judicial act of God. Legal act of God. Whereby those who put faith in Christ, if you believe in Christ, if you put your faith in Christ, if you put the right faith in Christ because you heard the right word of God, are declared righteous. We are declared, we are pronounced righteous in His eyes and free from guilt and punishment. So when you are justified, God is declaring, God is saying that you are righteous. But pastor, the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. Yes. But when the Lord Jesus Christ lived a righteous life, He imputed that righteousness to us. Therefore, by virtue of that, we are righteous in the sight of God. We're not guilty anymore. We cannot be punished anymore because we are already Righteous in the eyes of God. There is a difference between being justified in the eyes of God and being justified in the eyes of men. The good thing is this. God is the one that can put us to hell and He will not do that. Men can judge us, but they cannot do anything and they cannot bring us to hell. You understand what I'm saying? So we may not be justified in the sight of men, but what is important is that we are justified in the eyes of God. Because God is the one who will judge, not men. He will be the one to give the final judgment. Look at Romans chapter 4 and verse number 3. After this, verse number 5. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. When Abraham believed God, it was counted, credited to him as righteousness. So his believing made him righteous in the sight of God. But his action made him righteous in the eyes of men. You see what I'm saying? But what's important is in the sight of God. Because that will be our, he will be our final judge and will determine if we will go to heaven or hell. But as far as God is concerned, we are secured of heaven. Look at verse number 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So we are justified by faith. And our faith, our believing in God, our believing in the finished work 
of the Lord Jesus Christ is counted for our righteousness. So when we employ that faith, then we are counted as righteous in the eyes of God. Therefore, there is no more guilt. Therefore, there is no more punishment. But pastor, why are we guilty? That is the question. Why? Because as far as God is concerned, there is no more guilt. As far as God is concerned, there is no more punishment. Look at John chapter 5, verse number 24. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and he shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Wala nang judgment. Tapos na yun. Na na nalundagan mo na. Kung baga sa ano, skip. O na skip mo na yun. Nandoon ka na. Sa buhay. Meron ka ng buhay na walang hanggan. And you are not going to be condemned anymore because you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But look at those who do not believe. Look at John chapter uh, 3 verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Are you see? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So if you do not believe, you're condemned. Therefore, if you die in the state of unbelief, you will go to hell. But if you die in the state of believing, then you will go to heaven. And when you believe, that is final and executory because that is the faith that God had given unto us. Look at verse number 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So meaning to say, God loved the word. Amen? But at the same time, God's wrath is abiding. Nananatili to those who do not believe. So that's why when you die, at the moment that you die, when you open your eyes split second, you will taste the wrath of God. Because it is abiding on the unbelievers. But if you are a believer, the moment you die, one second or... I, twinkling of an eye, when you open your eyes, you will be in paradise. You will be in heaven. Why? Because you have passed from death unto life. You remember what the Lord Jesus Christ told the thief? Today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Because that is your condition. That is your standing once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Again, the problem is this. Justification is so simple. Salvation is very simple. But then people made it complicated. They made it complicated. By looking at so many things after you made a profession. Which is only right. Because we need to be sure. But then again, sometimes we go to the extreme and try to unsave a safe person or try to produce guilt in the mind of save people because we doubt if these people are really saved. I believe what we need to do is believe that they are saved and then teach them to produce fruit of their salvation. Instead of going on the negative path, let us first go on the positive path. And if it will not happen, then that's the time that we need to go to the negative path. Okay, let us look at the things involved in justification. What are the things that are involved in justification? Number one, forgiveness is involved in justification. If you're justified, you are pardoned or you are forgiven. But that is just an element. As I have told you, it is more than just pardon. It is more than just being forgiven. So, 
For a holy God and a righteous God to forgive sin is not a small matter. It is very important to God because it costs Him His only begotten Son so that He can forgive us. So it is not a small matter. It is not a light thing. That's why if you got saved, remember, the price that God paid for our salvation is the very life of His only Son. Ganun kahalaga yun. Kaya pag binabali, wala natin ng kaligtasan, imagine niyo na lang natin kung ano nararamdaman ng Panginoon. Kaya, just imagine after you got saved, you do not even have the desire to worship God. If you really got saved, eh? So what do you think God will feel about it? You're not interested to give. You're not interested to read the Bible. You're not interested in, in uh, uh, serving the Lord. That's why people will say that you are not saved. Why? Because you are not showing this fruit meat for repentance. And people may be right. But the point is, you, not them. You see, you see what I mean? It is you. You are the one giving the impression if you are saved or not. Other people can only say there is fire because of the smoke that they can see. That is the reason why it is very important to understand the elements that are involved in justification that we are forgiven. And the reason why we are forgiven is because the, the only begotten Son of God shed His blood, His precious blood for us on the cross of Calvary. So that is the reason why if you will not understand these things maybe just maybe the holy spirit is not residing in your heart because remember the holy spirit is the third person in the trinity and he is co-equal with god the father and god the son and god the son is the one who died he knew what transpired on the cross of calvary so therefore the, the holy spirit can convict us of sin and of righteousness that the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. So maybe that's the reason why people are saying that you may not be saved, but their pronouncement is not the important thing. The important thing is, did you really believe? Yun important yan. Kahit ano pa sabihin ko, sabihin ko, ay, hindi ka siguro saved, hindi ka uma-attend. Pwede tama ako, pero pwede mali ako. Pero ang tanong, ikaw, ano sa tingin mo? Because, because salvation is personal. It is, it is between you and God. We are only spectators. But you are the player. You and God are the main players in your salvation. We are only looking and we just want to help. If we can see that there's a problem. We just want to, to give you the warning signs. But eventually, you will be the one to decide and to judge these things. Look at Micah chapter 7, 18 to 19. Because God is in the forgiving business. That is what God wants to do. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity? You see? That is, that is the desire of God. That is the heart of God. That's why He's not willing that any should perish and pass it by the transgression of the remnant of His heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighted in mercy. We are serving a merciful God. So that is the reason why we can always approach him and he will give us what we do not deserve because if he will give us what we deserve, then we will go to hell. But he's not willing that any uh, should perish. Verse number 19. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. He says, your sins and iniquities will I remember no more. That is our God. So He delights in forgiving sins. He delights in pardoning those people who committed sin. So in justification, all our sins are forgiven and the guilt and punishment thereof removed. Look at Acts 13. 38 to 39. Acts 13, 38 to 39. Be it known unto you, therefore men and brethren, 
that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Not only sin, sins. You see, there is a problem here. There is a, a teaching that goes like this. It, 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 it was a taught by the group of Jack Hiles. That the only thing that you need to repent of is unbelief. Because what will bring you to hell is unbelief. So when you repent of your unbelief and you believe, then you are saved. You do not have to repent of your sins. But this is very clear. Verse number 38. The Bible says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Not only sin. Because I mean, for the wages of sin is death. Oh, you see, that is singular. There is what we call singular, but in a class. It includes everything that is not according to the will of God. Whatever is not of faith is sin. So that includes everything that is not of faith. You understand what I'm saying? So you do not have to say, oh, that is singular. So therefore, that is only the sin of unbelief. So when you stop unbelieving and you start to believe, then you are saved. You do not have to repent of your sins. But the forgiveness that, that was preached is actually the forgiveness of sins. All of our sins, not only the sin of unbelief. Because if all we need to do is believe and do not repent of our sins, so we can believe and continue sinning. And that is against the doctrine of repentance. Look at verse number 39. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. Not only from unbelief. Amen. Amen. Not only from unbelief. Because I, I read uh, the book of Jack Hiles. I think it's a, it, uh, it is entitled uh, about justification, uh, about the right kind of justification, something like that. He said that the reason why you will go to hell is because of unbelief. So therefore, when you repent of your unbelief and you believe, then now you are on your way to heaven. So you do not have to repent of all your sins, only the sin of unbelief. So you only change your mind of not believing Jesus to believing Jesus. And if you only change your mind, from unbelieving to believing, therefore you have not changed your mind from shunning sin into continually doing it even though you already believe. So that is on the other uh, extreme of another extreme of the uh, uh, spectrum that we are looking at when it comes to salvation. But the Bible is clear. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. That is why in uh, justification, it involves forgiveness. And then number two, it involves imputation. I already mentioned this. Meaning to say, credited to us or it is as if you are the one who did it of Christ's righteousness. Even though we're not righteous, but because of that imputation, we became righteous in the eyes of God. Look at Romans 3.22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Meaning to say, the perfect Holy righteousness of Jesus Christ was imputed to the sinners. That's why Paul can call us saints. That is our standing. That is not yet our state. But that is our standing before God. Kaya nga merong sanctification. Doon pa lang yung process na pupunta tayo sa state of being perfect. Pero hindi ngayon. Hindi natin ma-achieve ngayon yan. Yung end ng sanctification ay 
glorification. When we are glorified, we will not commit sin anymore. Therefore, we are now perfect in our state as we are in our standing. Ang standing po, ito yung tingin sa atin ng Diyos, yung lagay natin sa Diyos. Ang state, kung ano tayo ngayon. Yun ibig sabihin nun. Kaya, wag kayo, wag, para hindi tayo malito. Our standing is perfect before God, but our state is imperfect. That's why we can sing, He's still working on me. Ayon. God is not yet finished. God is still working. He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until. Oh, merong until. And we need to wait for that. But we must go through what we call sanctification. Okay, the condition of justification. What is the condition of justification? How can we be justified? Faith. Faith is the condition of justification. Galatians 2.16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Therefore, somebody must do something for us in order, in order for us to be justified. And Jesus did something for us. Therefore, our justification is by faith because of the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand? So yung, yung pananampalataya natin dahil doon sa ginawa ng Panginoon ng dahilan kung bakit tayo po ay inaring ganap. Sa Tagalog yung justified o justification ay inaring ganap. Kinuha ka talagang ganap na ganap. Kaya ang mga transgender hindi justified kasi hindi ganap. Kahit ano pang gawin nila, hindi magaganap. Kasi nga, walang ovary. Lalaki, tapos sabi mo, babae ka, wala kang ovary. So, hindi ganap. Pwede mong ipaputol yung, yung organ mo, papalit mo ng butas, hindi pa rin ganap. Kasi, wala pa rin ovary, wala pa rin excel, hindi ka pa rin makakapag-reproduce. So, kaya hindi ka pwedeng ma-justify. Kasi yung pagkaari mo, hindi ganap. Yung, yung konsehal ng Bataan, ay yung congressman ng Bataan, congressman ng congresswoman, kung sino man yun, si Roman, ay legal na raw na siya'y babae. Dahil dinala na sa korte, at, hina, at ang desisyon ng korte, babae siya. Nagpapalit na rin yata siya ng, ano, ng sex organ. Pero hindi mabubuntis yun. Bakit kasi? Hindi siya inaring ganap. Kulang. At kahit lagyan siya ng ovary, Hindi pwede. Walang paglalagyan. Kasi iba yung uh, physiological uh, makeup ng lalaki, iba yung physiological makeup ng babae. Oh. Sa ilalagay yung matris, sa ilalagay yung polopetub, sa niya, ano. At kahit meron pa, ay hindi pa rin kasi lalaki pa rin talaga siya. Pero sa justification, inari tayong ganap. Ibig sabihin, completely by God. That is why we are perfect in the sight of the Lord. Because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. Romans 3.26 To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. You see, God will never condone sin. He cannot justify the Wicked. And we are wicked. So why were we justified? Because God imputed His righteousness to us. And therefore, He is just when He justified us. Because we are not wicked anymore. We are already perfect, righteous. So He is now just when He justified us. So yun yung ginawa ng Panginoon. Kaya nga, that He might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So when you believe in Jesus in the sight of God the Father, 
Your righteousness is the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yun yung ating ano, yun yung ating kalagayan as we believe in Jesus. Romans 4.5, we read this uh, a while ago. But to him that worketh not. That's why it is very clear, there is no amount of work that you can do in order for you to be justified. That's why when in James chapter 2, uh, James says that see, that when Abraham offered Isaac, he was justified by works. He's talking about in the eyes of men. Because in the eyes of God, there is no amount of righteousness or work that you can do that you will be justified. It is only by faith. But, men cannot see faith. We see faith in works. You understand what I'm saying? We see faith in works. That is why we believe that a person is safe. Of course, we are not absolute judge because of the works. But let us be reminded, number one, there are people who are basically good-natured. Mababait. And that's why some Christians, even though they should not even say this, not even in their wildest imagination, can even say that, well, sometimes then believers are better than us because their life is more righteous than our lives. Of course, that is wrong because the righteousness of unbelievers are as filthy rags according to the Bible. But that is according to the eyes of God, not according to our eyes. For, I, for us, in our eyes, a good deed is a good deed. Example, an unbeliever helped you. That is a good deed as far as you are concerned. And you will be grateful for the person who did good to you even though that person is an unbeliever. That is in our eyes, but it is completely different in the eyes of God. That no matter what they do, if they are not saved, it is filthy. It is abomination in the eyes of God. So, an unbeliever helps me, and I am grateful, but in the eyes of God, that person is abominable. So that is what we need to understand. So, we cannot judge justification solely on the action of people. Because there are unbelievers who can do good. And there are believers who lacked in doing good. That is just true. There are believers who are not faithful to God. Or the unfaithfulness is very glaring. That sometimes we think that and ask the question, is this person really saved? Is he really saved? Why is he acting like that? So we may be right and we may be wrong. But the final determinant of justification is faith in God. So my question is this. What if Abraham did not go to Mount Moriah and offered Isaac? Because he was over came by his emotion and so much love for his son that he will not offer Isaac in Mount Moriah. We will say that, well, maybe Abraham did not really believe God. Because if he really believed God, he should have offered Isaac. So why? What can we say when Abraham lied about Sarah? Hmm. Is he then not saved because he lied? Is he saved because he offered Isaac? What is the final determinant of justification? It is our faith. It is not our action, though action plays a very important role, not in justification, but connected to justification. But we have to be careful in saying those things because we have a case in the word of God. And when Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness and his succeeding actions did not determine his justification but his faith, his belief in God. 
You see what I mean? Because he lied. And he offered Isaac. And when he offered Isaac, the Bible says, he was justified when he offered Isaac. You see then how a man is justified by his works? That is in the eyes of men. But remove the account of Isaac and emphasize on the account of him lying twice over his relationship with Sarah. What can we say then to Abraham? So we have to be careful to say things according to the word of God. Not to say it according to how we perceive it. That is something that is very important and that is something that we must look at so that we will not be giving a wrong impression that justification or salvation sometimes is because of works. And that is what you call lordship salvation. That a person who is truly saved will do good works, of course. But the, again, the question is, how much good works can we do in order to prove that we are saved or not? That is again the question. So that is why we must always be on the positive side and try to teach people how to produce these works of salvation. And if it will not work, then of course we need to warn and tell them of the danger of not really being justified by the Lord because of the things that are happening in our lives. So the best of men need to be saved by faith in Jesus Christ and wicked sinners can also be justified in the same way. There is no difference. So the means of justification. What are the means of justification? Number one, by God. He is the author of justification. He is the author of justification. Romans 8.33 Romans 8.33 Who shall lay anything to the church of God's elect? It is God that justify it. So, who shall lay anything to the church of God's elect? How can I say that a saved person is not saved because of how can I really say that? I can say that you may not be saved because of, but I cannot say you are not saved because of. Because I cannot church the elect of God because it is God that justify it. Amen? Ang Diyos ang nag-justify. Ang Diyos ang nag-aaring ganap, hindi ako. So pag inaring ganap yung tao, hindi na buhay, hindi na buhay ng maayos, hindi ko pa sabi, hindi ka saved. Ang buhay mo hindi tama. I cannot do that. Kapatid, kaibigan, baka hindi ka ligtas. Yun, pwede. Kasi ito nangyayari sa buhay mo. I cannot charge them. I can only presume. But I cannot give any judgment to people who made a profession. Liba na lang kung talagang glaring. Meron naman mga bagay na obvious eh. Sabi, oh, I'm saved, but I do not want to go to church. I do not want to read the Bible. I do not want to do anything with God. Uh, it's okay with me that I'm just saved. Of course, that is very obvious. But there are people who are struggling. And our job is to help them get through those struggles by the grace of God. Again, justification is a judicial act performed by God the Father. Uh, and He is our Almighty God. Number two, it is by grace. Grace is the foundation or source of justification. Again, Romans 3.24. Being justified freely, Romans 8.3.24. Uh, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So justification is free. It is salvation. It is the gift of God, you cannot purchase your way to salvation. There is no way that you can buy your stairway to heaven. There is nothing that you can do in order for you to be justified. It is by grace, unmerited favor given to us by God 
and God alone because of the faith that He gave us so that we can apply the faith and we can receive free justification. And that justification is through the redemption. Why? Because it means that we were sold into the market of sin. In, in, in a Greek market is agora. When Adam committed sin before God, we were sold into the market of sin para tayong isinanla. Nakasanla tayo ngayon sa kasalanan. If you will study in Bible school, systematic theology, yung redemption is the doctrine of what we call exagoraso. Yung ex out. Ibig sabihin, we were bought out from the market of sin. Kaya, redeem or redemption. Redeem, how I love to proclaim it. Redeem by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Di ba? Yun yun. Yun yun nangyari sa atin. We were redeemed. Ayan. How I love to proclaim it. Redeem by the blood of the Lamb. So may redemption na nangyari. When we were redeemed, we are no longer under the market of sin. So that is free redemption or justification. So it is only by grace. Look at Titus 3.7. Titus chapter 3, verse 7. That being justified by His grace. You see? We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Why uh, do we have eternal life? Because we are justified by the grace of God. That's why all throughout the Bible, salvation is only by grace. Nothing that we can do in order to obtain salvation. That is why pride is not part of being saved. Ako, save ako kayo. Hindi. No. Hindi. You cannot say that. You must not even do that. You cannot be proud of your salvation. You must be humbled by your salvation. That even though I'm not worthy, God saved me. And it is my prayer that you too will be saved. That is the attitude. Meron nagso soul winning. Ayaw niya maniwala. Sige. Go to hell. Kaya niya. Buta sa iba. Hindi ganun. Ayaw nga natin mapunta sa... Ayaw nang just mapunta sa impyerno tayo. Kaya naman gustong gusto mo. Oh, hindi magandang attitude yun. Baka, baka masabing save ka ba talaga? Oh, di ba? Kapag ka meron tayong attitude na gano'n. Kaya minsan nahahatulan tayo because of the attitude that we show. So there must be no pride when it comes to salvation. So it is by God, it is by grace, it is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Romans 5.9. Much more, sabi niya eh. Then, being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. So, ano yung pinambayad? Blood. Kaya mga naniniwala sa bloodless sacrifice, aba, hindi. yun, masasabi mong hindi save yun. Kasi wrong gospel yun. Ay, hindi. We cannot be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ because it already dried up. It was shed more than 2,000 years ago. Are you limiting God? Are you judging that God cannot make His blood effective forever? Uh, the Bible is clear. Much more than being justified by His blood. So if they do not believe in the blood, therefore they are not justified. They are still guilty before God. And because of that blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. And then we are justified by His resurrection. Look at Romans chapter 4, verse 25 who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So why is resurrection important in justification? Because when the Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected, it proves that His sacrifice was accepted by God the Father. And therefore, we are justified because of that acceptance. Remember, in the Old Testament, during the Day of Atonement, when the blood was not accepted, the high priest will die and the sins of Israel will not be forgiven for that whole year. So that is why resurrection is the proof that we are 
justified and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ was accepted by God the Father. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Yung uh, justification by resurrection. And then, the evidence of justification. Ito na yun. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Pastor, how about work? Meron yan. Uh, that is the evidence of justification. Works, if you are truly justified, this justification will manifest in good works. So, a justified person will do good. That's it. How much good? I do not know. How many? I do not know. Until when? I do not know. But a justified person will manifest his justification in doing good works, just like Abraham when he offered Isaac. But along with his good works are sins because Abraham lied about Sarah. And Abraham fathered a son outside of God's covenant. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, if we will only judge the justification of people because of works, there is a danger that we will make a wrong judgment. But a justified person will do good. Especially so if it will not entail much effort to do that which is good. Like attend church. Normal yun sa justified na tao. No matter in church. Magbasa ng Bible. Normal yun sa isang justified na tao na magbasa ng Bible kasi may Holy Spirit siya. Ang Holy Spirit ay gusto niya ang Word of God para makonvict niya tayo. Normal sa isang saved na tao, yung mga routine na ginagawa ng isang manan ng palatay, given na yun. But there are areas in our lives where it takes deeper and great faith in order for them, for us to do them. Like for example, yung mga pagsuko ng buhay sa Panginoon. Kasi, if, if it is, if, if that is the way of uh, uh, looking at justification, uh, if we are going to to look at other places, especially first world countries, it is as if very few are justified because very few are surrendering their lives to the Lord. Di ba napapansin? Kaya nga sabi ko, pagdating ni Pastor Jesse Sang, may, may luluto natin siya ng konti. Tanungin natin bakit sa Singapore yung mga mga Singaporean hindi nagsusurrender ng buhay sa Panginoon. What's the problem? Bakit kulang na kulang sila sa pastor? Ang daing Pilipinong gusto magpastor, ayaw naman nila. Pero from among them, bakit wala? If we will judge, baka sabihin natin, baka wala naman talagang tunay na naligtas dyan. But we cannot. So, we need to look at areas where things are lacking. Saan ba yung kulang? Ano ba yung mga nangyayari? Ano ba yung emphasis? Because sometimes, even though it is not in the Bible, but most of the time, what you emphasize, you will get. Especially so when you emphasize something that is according to the Word of God. If you preach about surrendering to the Lord Jesus Christ and doing God's will, then people may realize that the Lord is calling them. And that may trigger them to surrender their lives unto the Lord. So look at James. Again, James 20, uh, 2, 21 to 23. Tignan natin to. Was not Abraham our father justified by works, I see, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? So we need to be careful. His justification here is not in the sight of God. Because it is very clear that justification in the sight of God is by grace, not of works. To him that worketh not, Again, uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 3, 4 and 5 yata. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Maliwanag yun. Ang nag-justify sa atin sa harapan ng Diyos, yung faith. Hindi yung works. Pero balik tayo sa James chapter 2. 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? So James is talking to Israelites and he's telling them, was he not justified when he offered Isaac? It, is, it did not say he was justified by God. But in Romans, it's very clear that he, that a person is justified in the eyes of God by faith and not by works. Look at 22. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? Is faith not enough? Faith is enough for salvation. For by faith are ye saved, for by works, I, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Amen? For by grace are ye saved through faith. What saved you? The grace because of our faith. Maluwanag yun. And not of your works. That's clear. So, what is this? James is simply saying that because of work, you are showing your faith. It was made perfect, not that faith is lacking. It simply means that because of your works in the eyes of men, they will confirm that you have faith. Verse 23. As the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see, James emphasized when Abraham believed God, righteousness was imputed unto him. But if we will go back, but when he offered Isaac, that faith was manifested to the eyes of men that they believe that Abraham really have faith in God. The same thing with us. If you will not show works, then people might wonder, do you really have faith? Were you really justified by God? But then again, we will still commit sin. So let us not conversely say that because you are still committing sin, therefore you are not Justified. You are now going into the Lordship salvation. And that is not biblical. Eh, do you understand what I'm saying? Sana ma, ma, ma-follow nyo mga kapatid para wag tayong judge ng judge. Hanggat hindi talaga extreme. Hanggat hindi extreme. Pag extreme na, pwede natin i-judge, I believe. Yung talagang sabi niya, ah, hindi ako na, sinabi ko lang na, naniniwala ko kay Kristo talaga namang hindi. Kaya nga ayoko umatay, ako magbasa ng Bible, sinusumpa ako kayo, mga mana ng palataya kayo. Ayun, pwede mong sabihin talaga, hindi na save yung tao na yun. Kasi, kung may Holy Spirit yun, gagawin niya yun, baka patayin mo na siya ng Holy Spirit bago niya magawa yun. And that may be a sin unto death for this kind of people. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why we have to be careful regarding this thing. Pero, the evidence of justification is work. Whether you like it or not. Because we are created unto good works. Therefore, a saved person will do good works. And the good works that a saved person will do is acceptable to God. But the good works that an unbeliever will do is not acceptable unto God. There lies the difference. That's why you cannot say that an unbeliever is more righteous than a believer that is abominable because an unbeliever is not righteous before God but a believer no matter even if he commits sin is righteous before God and you cannot charge him because it is God that justify it okay so what will be the result of justification peace Romans 5 1 if you know that you're justified this will this should happen therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So justification or salvation must give us peace, not confusion. Doubt may come, but you can ascertain it by going back to the Word of God. And once you ascertain it, then you must live with peace in God. Meron tayong peace sa Panginoong Diyos. Reconciled na tayo. And when you believe that, then you're going to have the peace of God. 
not only with God, but you will have the peace of God that passeth understanding. Now, why is it that even if you commit sin, you are still sure that you are saved? Though you are not happy that you committed sin. Though you are miserable because you are committing sin in life. But deep within is still the assurance that you are justified and you're a child of God. So, merong kapayapaan kahit na ano pa yung mangyari. Number two, access into the presence of God, Romans 5.2. Tuloy lang natin. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we have access sa Panginoong Diyos. Hindi na uh, natin kailangan ng kaya nga priest tayo eh. Amen? Priest of every believer. Hindi na natin kailangan ng go in between. Hindi na natin kailangan ng mediator kasi si Christ nag-mediate na natapos na yung mediatory work niya nung nasave tayo. Kaya we can uh, ha- we now have access to the Father. Pero ito number three, ito yung ayaw natin. Pero sa sa gusto mo, result ito ng justification. Ano yun? Number three, dito sa Romans chapter 5, verse number three. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Isa sa result ng justification ay tribulation. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Kasi paano tayo magiging pasensyoso? Paano tayo magkakaroon ng patience kung walang tribulation? Kaya tingnan niyo sa 1st, 2nd Timothy 3.12. Hmm. 2nd Timothy 3.12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Pasunok pa siya ako na persecute Ay, tingnan mo yung verse. Hindi ka namumuhay kay Kristo. Compromiser ka kayang numero uno. Paano ka makaka-tribulation? Paano kang ipe-persecute? Eh, lahat ng kaharap mo, agri ka. Wala kang separation. Ang sayo, oh, let us all be united even though we are different. Hindi. Meron purity of doctrine. Naniniwala ka na ang saved, possess ng Holy Spirit. May nagtuturo na kahit saved, pwede pang mapossess ng evil spirit. Paano kami magkakaroon ng fellowship? Paano kami magkakaroon ng unity? Eh, binabastos niya Holy Spirit. Biro mo, ando ng Holy Spirit, walang takot ang evil spirit na tumira sa tinitira ng Holy Spirit. Oh. Kaya hindi pwede. Kaya meron tayong ecclesiastical separation. Kaya minsan, napagbibintangan tayong akala nyo, kailangan tama, hindi ho. May separation. Sabi ng Panginoon, come out from among them and be ye separate. That is the teaching of the Lord. Hindi. Pastor, kahit ang doctrine natin, hindi magkapareho, kailangan magkaisa tayo, alang-alang kay Kristo. Hindi nga gusto ng Panginoon yun eh. O Romans chapter 16, paano niyang gusto? Hmm. Romans 16, verse 16. Para ma-iglesia muna tayo. Salute one another with an holy kiss. O see? The church, church of Christ, salute you. Sa iglesia yan, ito yung baptist. O yung tamang tu, ito yung tamang turo ng Bible. Now I beseech you, brethren. Anong beseech? Pinakikiusapan ko kayo. Strong na pakikiusap. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. Ah, See? Pag ang doktrina kontra sa tinuro o natutunan nyo, sabi ni, ni Paul, sa tinuro ko sa inyo, tandaan nyo yung mga yon, markahan nyo, at ano, iwasan nyo. Oh. Paano mo sasabing, ay kahit magkakaibang paniniwala natin, alang-alang kay Kristo, magkaisa tayo. Humanistic yun, hindi biblical yun. Maluanag yan. Naalala ko tuloy nung nasa, nagpapasar ako sa Santa Cruz. Nag-aya sila, sabi nila, Pastor, meron pong sports fest. Christian sports fest. Lahat po ng mga Kristiyano sama-sama. Sali kayo. Ay, sabi ko, ayaw ko. Kasi, ano, mahirap yung kako dahil sa hindi pare-pareho naman ng pananampalataya. Eh, sorry ka, hindi kami sasama. Eh, may mga Baptist na sumama. Eh, umulan. Umulan. Takbuhan sila. 
Abay, mga ibang pastor, hindi umalis. Nasa gitna ng basketball court. Panginoon, patikilin mo ang ulan. Talagang hindi tumigil. Basta sila, nakasakit lahat. Linggo, halos walang umatay sa simbahan. Eh kasi mga kapatid, kung kalooban ng Diyos umulan, wag mo namang patigilin. Kasi pinaulan ng Diyos, baka yung mga farmers kailangan ng ulan. Nagtatanim sila. Ikaw dal gusto mo lang makapag-basketball, pinahihinto mo ulan. Ay, kuha niyo ibig sabihin, dapat Bible, hindi puro ikaw. Ang mana ng palataya, they test everything according to the Word of God. Oh, avoid them, 18. Ano sabi pa dyan? For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Kaya hindi pwede. Kailangan talaga may separation. Kaya kapag ka justified ka, tribulation. Ito ngayon yung magwawakas tayo rito. Andain ngayon takot na takot sa atin sa Pilipinas. Dahil nga sa Sogi. Soji. Soji ang pronounce nila eh. Soji Bill. Nagkaroon na ng prayer rally sa tapat ng Senado ng iba-ibang churches. Kasi ecumenical movement yan eh. Ako, kaya nga sabi ko doon sa eksenang yun, medyo bilib ako sa, bilib ako sa paninindigan ni Jeremiah Punsalan eh. Sabi niya, no, we will do our prayer meeting in our church. But we will not go there. Because it is an ecumenical prayer rally. And we need to stand by our faith. And we will not go there. Kaya maraming Baptist nandun. Kaya nagbabanatan sa ano? Sa FB. Sabi ko, lagay natin sa tamang perspective. Bilang Filipino, karapatan mo express ang iyong sa loobin regarding Soji Bill. Kung against ka, magpunta ka ron bilang Pilipino. Kasi it is our constitutional right to express our opinion. So kung Pilipino ka, nagpunta ka ron dahil Pilipino ka, walang problema. Pero kung nagpunta ka ron as a church, at dahil Kristiyano ka, gusto mong paalam sa gobyerno, kami yung mga Kristiyano, wag niyong binabaliwala, marami kami. Matakot kayo. At pagbigyan nyo kami, no to Soji Bill. Mali. Bakit? Una, ecumenical. Number two, saan mo makikita sa Bible na ang Diyos gusto niya marami para magtagumpay? Gideon. Start sila, ilan sila? Ilan sila? 22,000. Sabi ng Diyos, ang dami nyo. Baka pag nanala kayo, isipin nyo dahil marami kayo. Bawasan. Naging? 10,000. Marami pa rin yan. Naging 300. Sabi ng Diyos, sige, gagamitin ko yung 300. Why? Because God wants to get glory in that when something happens, it is unmistakably the work of God. Eh kung ang gobyerno natin, tinanggihan ng Soji Bill, kasi nakita nila ang dai pala ng Kristiyano, sino mag-glorify? Hindi ang Diyos. Yung grupo. At sasabihin natin, pagkatapos nung, kita nyo na, kaya natin. Every time na may ano, ali kayo! So good, mga kapatid! We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hindi yun. Si David, si Goliath, sino ginamit ng Diyos para labanan si Goliath? Si David, ang liit, kumpara sa laki ni Goliath. Bakit? Para pag nanalo, maliwanag na maliwanag dahil sa Diyos. Eh ngayon, ang ginagawa natin, we are fighting might with might. No. God is the one who will fight for us. Not us. Kaya dito nagkakamali ang mga Kristiyano. Kaya yung mga Kristiyano pumapasok sa politika. Wala sa kalooban ng Diyos yan. Bakit? Kasi pipiliti nilang magtagumpay ang Diyos o ang Biblia sa pamamagitan nila nasa politika. Tanong, kailangan ba ng Diyos ang tulong nila? Misan din natin inisi, kaya test everything from the Word of God. Kahit nga, kung gusto nga ng Diyos baguhin ang Pilipinas, sa isang ilang pata, babaguhin niya. 
Walang makakakontrol, walang makakatanggi. Gusto ng Diyos, bago yung lahat ng isip ng mga senador? Sa isang kisap mata, mapabago niya lahat yan. Na hindi kailangan ng tulong natin. Amen? So kailangan, sundin natin yung Biblia, yung alituntunin ng Panginoon. Ilan ang nag-turn sa word upside down? 120. Nung day of Pentecost. Oh. At sa ano pa sabi nila? Di ba nagtaka yung mga tao? Sino yung mga yan? Galilean. Meron bang mabuting galing sa Galilee? May edukado bang tao ron? Pero they know our language. Ano sabi nila? This is the work of God. Yun ang ganun trumabaho ang Diyos. Kasi tayo, isip tao tayo eh. Tayo, mas marami, mas makapangyarihan. Sa Diyos, mas unti. Mas makapangyarihan. Si Moses, nung nasa Egypt siya, may kapangyarihan siya, wala. Meron. Second in command siya eh. Sinubukan niyang gamitin ng kapangyarihan. Ano nangyari? Napalaya siya. Nagpunta siya sa desert. Ilang taon? 40 years until sabihin niya, Panginoon, wala akong kaya. Nung sabi niyang, hindi mo kaya, o, gagamitin na kita. Kasi, pag may nangyari, alam mong ako, hindi ikaw. Eh kung matalino ka, may nangyari. <laughs> Galing ko kasi. Ay, yung, yung, kasing, yung church na yun, kaya ganun kalaki yun. Magaling kasi pastor dun eh. Sino na luluwalati, kapatid? Sino na itataas? Yung pastor. Pero, alam mo yung pastor dun, wala mang pinag-aralan, pero talagang pinagpapala ng Diyos. Kaya nga sabi ng Bible, not many wise. Meron ding wise, pero hindi marami. Amen. Not many wise. Iilan lang kami. <laughs> Misan talaga, ano talaga ang tao. Not many wise. Iilan lang yung mga wise. At yung mga wise na yon, kahit pinagpala, hindi kumukuha ng kaluwalatian ng Diyos. Sila nga yung sikat pero low profile. Yung makikita mo, sabi mo, pambira napaka-approachable ng taong yun, pero kilalang kilala. May mga tao, hindi pa kilala, hindi na-approachable. Pakita mo ngayon, may mga pastor, tapos mag-preach, hindi mo pwedeng kamayan. Yung mga bodyguard, di ikot agad. Walang makalapit, baka daw patayin. Sabi ko, ano yung criminal ka ako, wanted? Yung pastor at papatayin? Hindi, galit ang Diablo dyan. Ang Diablo galit sa bawat kristyano. Hindi lang sa, uh, ano? Kasi ginagamit ng Diyos yan. Lahat ng kristyano ay pwedeng gamitin ng Diyos. At ang Diyos, pag hindi ka, uh, hindi pa uh, appointed time para mamatay ka, hindi ka mamatay. Para kasi lito lapit, pag hindi ka pa appointed ng Diyos mamatay, kahit pagpapariling ka, yung mga bala umiiwas. Hindi mo napasin si lito lapit? Di ba pag nakipagbarilan, isang daan niya, bumabaril din lahat yun. Pero walang tumatama kasi umiiwas yung bala. O, hindi pa kalooban yun ng Diyos na mamatay ka. So, mga kapatid, these are things that we need to understand. Na, if you are justified, there will be tribulation. Takot na takot tayo. Tinan yung Diablo Tuso. Hindi makapasa sa national, ginapang nila sa mga local government units, pasado na sa napakarami probinsya, napakaraming syudad. So, takot na takot ngayon, naku, hindi na tayo pa sa mga pagbabible study, pag nagsabi tayong homosexual, pwede tayong makulong, pwede tayong ibilanggo. Kasama yan sa justification natin eh. Actually, sabi ko nga, pinahintulot na ng Diyos yan. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi napakaraming mga simbahan, napakaraming mga kristyano, napakaraming mga pastor, na ang buhay ay maginhawang masyado, masyadong masarap, wala nang hirap, at sabi ng Diyos, ngayon ko napalilitawin kung sino yung mga tunay makikita natin ngayon. Kahit bawal pa. Ibig sabihin, pag may batas na bawal, hindi ka na mangangaral. Pag may batas na bawal, hindi ka na magpipreach. Pag may batas na anti-discriminatory, hindi ka na pwede mag-Bible study, gawin mo pa rin. Sabi nga nila, baka sabihin, Pastor Joel, kaya ang lakas ng loob mo kasi nasa Cambodia ka eh. Hindi o, oh, kahit pag ko ng Pilipinas, magpipreach ako. Gagawin ko pa rin, bakit? Kasi, nakita ko na sa Bible yan, kinulong sila Peter. 
gumawa ng paraan ng Diyos na kalaya sila, winarningan sila, at ano ang sagot nila? We ought to obey God rather than men. Oh. So, anong pagkakaiba? Hindi ba ang ganda nun, nakulong ka? Huwag mo naman, ay, kulong niyo ako! Huwag naman ganun. Nakulong ka kasi nangangaral ka. Huwag naman yung, alam nyo, wisdom. Hindi yung alam mo nang may ordinance. Alam mo nang bawal. Pupunta ka sa plaza. Ang mga bakla! Ang mga transgender! Eh, baliw ka. Hindi ka matapang. Si, ano ka, baliw. Alam mo na eh. Huwag mong hamunin, pero gawin mo yung nararapat mong gawin nang walang pagpo-provoke. Bible study ka. Alam mo naman, Bible study po tayo. At teka po, may LGBT ho ba rito? Ako po, ah, ah okay, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, alam nyo, accepted po ng Bible yan. <laughs> Huwag mo nang tanungin kung may LGBT. Basta't mag-Bible study ka kung ano yung nilagay ng Diyos sa puso mo, yun na ituro mo. Kung meron doon na masabi mo, ang mga bakla, pag hindi nagbago, sa impyerno pupunta, so be it. Eh, nagkataong pastor may LGBT. Kulong ka. It doesn't matter. I obeyed God. Amen. I obeyed God. Eh, kaysa naman yung, bago po tayo mag-start, may LGBT ho ba rito? Ito yung may AJ, ay, baguhin ko, mensahe ko. Oh, dito tayo. NIB ho tayo. Oh, di ba? Kasi ron, sa NIB, pag sinabi mong uh, ang mga effeminate, ay, pup- ay pag nagsinabi mong ang effeminate, ay uh, hindi kalooban ng Diyos, pupunta ka sa impyerno. Nakalimutang yung verse, eh, pero uh, somewhere sa ano eh. So, ganyan ang nangyayari. Kaya, sabi ko nga, Nakakatakot kasi ang Diablo, win-win situation. Magwawakas ako, si merong pastor Vincent Villavicencio na nagpadala ng kanyang mga video at na-share. Kahit sa IBMA, nakashare. Calling for all Christians to unite in order to fight Soji Bill. Tinan niyo, ha? Hindi natin napapansin in a subtle way inaalis yung line of separation. Pinapayunay tayo as Christians against Soji Bill. Walang problema kung pinapayunay tayo as Filipinos against Soji Bill. Yes, I will be there. Pero Tayong mga Kristiyano mag-unite against Soji Bill. No. That is ecumenism. Pag ginawa natin yon at nagtagumpay tayo, ang sasaksak sa isipan natin, tama pala ito, makapangyarihan pala tayo. So next na presidente, sa atin na manggagaling. Nawala na yung ating mandate na ang church ay nilagay ng Diyos para sa spiritual matters at itin, isinetap niya ang gobyerno para sa mga material matters, temporal matters. Sa, ata, sa atin, eternal matters. Huh. Pag na-sidetrack tayo, makinig kayo, pag na-sidetrack tayo ng jablo, hindi na tayo magkoconcentrate sa kaligtasan ng tao, magkoconcentrate na tayo sa ikagaganda ng lipunan na anong sabi ng Bible? It will become worse and worse. Tayo na mismo ang kumukontra sa itinalaga ng Diyos. Tayo na ngayon ang magiging kaaway ng Diyos. Pansin niyo mga kapatid, ganyang katuso ang Diablo. Pag hindi mo tines lahat sa Bible, pag emotion mo, pinairal mo, kuha ka. Ipinopisay na ng Diyos, magiging masapasama ng pasama, katulad nung panahon ni Noah. Di ba? Sabi na Bible. Tapos ikaw ngayon, hindi, maglagay tayong presidente ng kristyano para bumuti. Hindi nga, sabi ng Diyos, pasama ng pasama eh. Ano ka ba? Oh, 
ang ihanda natin yung mga maliligtas bago dumating yung rapture. Bago mag-tribulation, maligtas yung mga dapat, yung mga maligtas, yung mga tao magkaroon ng chance maligtas. Yun ang trabahuhin natin, hindi ang gobyerno. Hayaan natin ang Diyos, ang kamay niya, ang kumilos dyan. Hindi tayo makikialam dyan. I-exercise natin yung rights natin as citizens. Pero hindi tayo papasok dyan dahil hindi yan ang panawagan ng Diyos sa atin. Ang panawagan ng Diyos is to preach the gospel to every creature. No more, no less. Kaya pag di tayo naging maingat, hindi natin maja-justify yung ating justification. At magiging kaaway pa tayo ng Diyos. Tayo pito mayo. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the...